What's up guys, welcome on in. I am the Red Viper and today I am here with a review of the Eve V. This is a two-in-one crowdfunded community developed tablet meant to take on the likes of the Surface Pro by Microsoft and many other two-in-one tablet devices that are out there on the market now. What do I mean when I say that this is community developed? Well, back in November 2016, um, the Eve Tech team launched an Indiegogo campaign that raised uh, just shy of $1.5 million um, to fund the production of these devices. Uh, they proceeded over the next year to work with their community on their forums and ask them, you know, we want to make you the the tablet device that you guys want, but no manufacturer seems willing to make you. So tell us what it, what would you like to see in your ideal tablet? And the, the community response was pretty overwhelming. Um, they got plenty of feedback. Um, lots of interesting discussions happened uh, to determine the quality of the keyboard, the type of keys on the keyboard, the, the um, trackpad, the screen, the different connectivity ports on the device and what I have here sitting in front of me again a year after it was funded is the first device that is going out to backers or the first wave of devices I should say um, the Eve team was nice enough to send me a one of these devices to um, test out and review uh, for you guys and give feedback on you know my personal use of this for streaming uh, and how well the device performs for that so I'm going to get into that in other videos, but what I'm going to do for you guys here today is just give you guys a general overview of this device. Um, now, the device that I have in front of me is an i7 um, 7Y75 processor. Uh, it's got 16 gigs of RAM, a 512 SSD drive, um, a wireless AC connectivity, as well as uh, Bluetooth 4.2. Um, now, this device does come in several flavors, varying RAM, varying processor. Um, this is the highest spec processor. Um, it ranges everywhere from an M3 all the way up to the i7 that's in this. Um, otherwise, from this point on, all the features I will be talking about come in all of these devices. So it is the same device. It is just different, different amounts of hardware uh, inside the device. But externally, it is completely the same. So as you can see, I got the device set up in tablet mode here um, with the keyboard attached. I'm going to just close it real quick and show you the actual um, exterior of the device as well as the ports. Um, so in general, it's got a really nice feel to it. Um, it does have this this like matted back to it, um, which does get dirty um, the same way that the Surface keyboard does. So be aware of that. That is something that you'll have to clean, but that's pretty typical with these fuzzy, fuzzy backed keyboards. Um, the, the back of it though, the uh, casing is I believe aluminum um, definitely has a really uh, high quality feel to it. Uh, one thing that's nice of it, uh, about it over the surface is the kind of rounded edges to it. So it feels much more natural when you're holding it in your hands like this. Um, at the top of the device here, you see you have your two microphones. Um, these are uh, noise canceling. I did try this out. Um, it does produce quite nice quality. Uh, However, what I will say is if you are using this, uh, you are recording with this and you are typing on the keyboard at the same time, it definitely does pick up those keyboard clacks. It's really not a whole lot you, you can do about that. I would expect it with the keyboard being this close. So just be aware of that. Um, on the exterior here on the edges, you have your speakers. Um, now, Again, I am usually not a fan of um, small speakers on devices. They tend to produce, um, you know, they tend to, to produce low quality audio. Um, I was rather impressed with the audio quality coming out of these. Um, it is, you know, you don't have your bass. It does come off a little bit more tinny, but you do get a um, really full, rich audio quality out of it. Um, so this, this device is definitely encouraging me to actually use the speakers on it. Um, Moving over to the side here, uh, you have your AUX jack. I believe this is microphone in as well as audio out. Um, you have two USB-C ports. One of these has Thunderbolt. I'm honestly not sure which. Um, you have a USB-A uh, 3.0 port on the side here. 
Um, there's actually two of these on the device. If we switch it over to the other side, um, you'll see my second USB-A um, 3.0, which has got my mouse in it right now, right there. Uh, you also have your volume rocker right here, really nice um, resistance on that. And then at the top, you have your power button as well as your um, fingerprint reader, which is really nice. And I'll show you this guy in just a moment. Um, probably one of my favorite features of the device right here. Now, um, some of you may be asking, you know, where there's there's one more port that you haven't mentioned. Where is it? Um, well, there is a micro US, uh, not micro USB, you micro um micro SD reader on this device. And it took me a little bit to find it, but if you pull the kickstand open, there it is right there. Um, so it's kind of hidden away, tucked in the background, which I, I kind of like. Um, just took me a bit to figure out where that was. Um, on the back of it here, you do have uh, what they call your world facing camera. I haven't gotten a chance to really um, try this out. I've been pretty much been sitting on my desk, so there wasn't much in front of it. Um, I will test that out in some other videos, um, particularly going over recording and streaming. Um, so kickstand um, pushes out. One thing that I did notice about this is it only, it, it doesn't go back as far as you think it would. And one issue that I did have with it, which I don't know if it's just my device or if it's these in general, is that as you're pushing it back, you'll get to a certain point where it will just fall away on its own like that. Um, so it, it does feel nice and tight up until that point. So, you know, if anywhere from here all the way back to that little sweet spot right there. And up oh, there it goes. Um, so there is there is that. You know, but I honestly really haven't felt the need to use the device at that angle. So it, it hasn't really impacted me much. But what I will say is that um, the kickstand, this is as far back as it goes. So you will not be able to lay it nearly as flat as the surface, which definitely does impact my utilization of it. Um, because I use this a lot for handwriting. I use uh, Microsoft OneNote and I like to write on the device. But now it's kind of like I'm writing at a bit of an angle. So you could always just lay it flat like this or put it on something, but that is something to note is that this does not expand to nearly the degree that the um, the Surface Kickstand does. Go ahead and open it back up. <laughs> So here is your, um, this is your front facing camera. I did use this. It is a, um, I believe it is 1200 by 800 resolution. Um, it's, it's okay. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I, I definitely would prefer to continue using my external camera, but in a pinch, it'll definitely do the job. If you're, you know, calling someone, um, you know, doing a, a face chat, um, through whatever means, Google Hangouts, whatever, ha what have you. Uh, it's definitely sufficient for that. It's got decent quality. Um, if you if you see here, you have um, you've got the keyboard. Now this is um, backlit, as you can see, it's purple right now. If you don't like the coloring of it, you're actually able to change the coloring of the backlight very easily. Uh, there are seven different colors. Um, which are obtained by pressing the function key here and then just simply clicking the V key to cycle through them. Um, so you had purple, red, um, kind of whitish blue, dark blue, um, aqua, green, yellow, and then back to purple. Um, so it's that easy to switch um, between the backlight colors. Another thing that's a little bit different here on the keyboard, you have your oops button, which is uh, instead of backspace, they just put oops with an exclamation point. So I thought that was a nifty little change they made. Uh, definitely, definitely some, somewhat endearing about this device. Um, along the top here, you have a quick button for Bluetooth because this is actually a Bluetooth keyboard. Um, and when I say this is a Bluetooth keyboard, what I mean is you can actually separate um, the keyboard from the device and uh, continue using it. Uh, in order to do so, you have to hold down the control button here and click the Bluetooth key. Then you see the backlight comes back on and the device is now responsive um, even though it is not connected with those pogo pins there. Uh, so this is really nice if you want to just you know kind of take it off and sit on an angle with it on your lap like this but keep the keep the tablet up there um so it's it's it it is really nifty that they they offered this sort of connectivity and of course since it is bluetooth it can pair with um yeah, devices other than the v i believe it has um pairing options up to three different devices um if you want to pair the device or if you receive this device like me and it's not already paired with the v um once it's disconnected from the V and it is turned on with that control Bluetooth. If you hold down the Bluetooth button, 
you'll see in a moment here a light is going to start blinking. There you go. So once it's blinking blue, it's now in discovery mode. You can go on your V or you can go on your other device, um, locate it, synchronize it, and then um, it'll work. I believe once you have it connected to multiple devices, it is just a matter of clicking through the Bluetooth to switch between them. I haven't actually connected it to another device, um, so unfortunately I, that is something I will test. I, I will do another video on the Bluetooth specifically, um, going over the, the um, setting that up and utilizing it. So um, reconnecting the, the tablet to the uh, keyboard is very easy. In fact, you don't even need to make the connection yourself. Um, you can't really see it, but I'm holding it. I'm holding it about half an inch above the table and the keyboard jumps right up and connects itself there. Uh, so once it's connected, you can kind of push it up and get a little bit of an angle on the keyboard itself. Um, the trackpad, I'm, I'm a bit of a trackpad connoisseur. I really love Apple's trackpads. Um, I'm okay with the Surface, and the vast majority of trackpads out there I actually distaste. Um, so what I will say is the V has successfully fallen between the Surface and the Apple um, trackpads for me. Uh, so it is definitely um, it is definitely of the quality that I enjoy. It's very responsive. Um, I haven't had any issues with it skipping around. Um, and it is, it is a really nice multi-touch experience. That said, as you can see, I still prefer my mouse, so I've gone ahead and had that connected. Um, now, going back to the fingerprint uh, login, I really prefer this over Windows Hello, uh, though I believe you can use that with this device as well. Um, my preference is I don't want the device to log in when I'm sitting in front of it. I want it to log in when I want to log in. Um, so the fingerprint is a really nice uh, balance between ha having to enter a password and, um, you know, still choosing when to log into the device. Logging into the device is as easy as just putting your finger on that power button. And there you go. It logs you right in. Um... So that is the device, the keyboard. Uh, next thing I'm going to go over to here is the pen. Um, this is this is the pen that is included with the V. Um, the keyboard and the pen are both included in the price, which is a nice thing over the Microsoft Surface, um, which you have to actually buy these independent of the device. Um, this pen is very much like the, um, the Surface 3 and earlier pens. Um, you have two buttons on it. Uh, you have your erase button and you have your right click select button. Um, to show you a comparison, I do actually have a Surface 3 pen right here. Um, so it is almost identical, uh, just a little bit more fashionable looking than this bulky old thing. Um, now, that said, my preference is actually for the Microsoft Surface 4 pen, um, which I have here as well, because you only have the one button here, which is actually your select button. And then in, for your erase button, instead of being the, the button here, is actually on the back. So if you want to erase something, you literally just flip the pen over and erase versus the V pen, you would just click on the button. So it, it, it's not a one is better than the other. This comes down to a preference thing. But the awesome thing is that um, the Surface Pen works just as good as the V Pen in my experience. Um, I tend to take a lot of handwritten notes and both of these pens work quite well on the V. Uh, last thing that I want to go over and cover here, um, externally you have your um, your power cable. Um, so the power brick is actually its own little separate entity here. Uh, this is a USB-C cable, so it gets plugged into the back. Both of these come with the V, of course. Um, so you plug that into the wall and then find your other end, which this is a big cable here. If you're not seeing that, this is, uh, I believe, about a six six foot cable or so. Decently long, definitely not had an issue with, you know, getting to a nearby power um, nearby power outlet while using that. Very easy to plug in. Um, going back to your USB-C ports on the side here, either of these actually works um, to power the device. You just simply plug it in there. Um, now, the disadvantage of this, of course, is that that power adapter is taking up one of your USB-C ports. Um, 
That said, I don't really have many USB-C devices, so it's not really a big deal to me. But where I could see it becoming a problem is if you're also using the Thunderbolt port for an external display. Um, because what's gonna happen is when you're plugged into power, you're gonna be plugged into power here, and then you're gonna have your Thunderbolt display coming out of the other, and now you're left with no USB-C ports. So just something to be aware of, but saying that, if you go out and buy a Microsoft Surface, you're still only going to have one USB 3.0 port and no USB-C ports. So just, just bear that in mind. Um, it, it, while, while there are, is a potential to run out of USB-C ports, there are certainly still more of them on this device than um, you will find on the Surface. Go ahead and disconnect that. Battery life. Um, so I've had some time to do some testing with uh, with this device. I took it, um, I've, I've kind of made my daily driver because I, I, I take my tablet and I work from uh, work on it at home. I use it, you know, in my home setup and I also go into work and use it in my work setup. Um, it is kind of like my secondary PC. Uh, this is how I was utilizing the Surface, so I just replaced it with the V. Um, what I did do is I charged it fully um, and then left the charger at home and took it to work with me. Um, and after an eight hour day of pretty, pretty regular usage, uh, it wasn't in sleep mode for the vast majority of the time. I almost always had something up and was doing it. Um, it still had 40% of the battery left. So um, obviously your battery experience is going to vary based upon what you are doing with the device. Um, but overall it is a, it is a, um, it is definitely a full day, um, use, uh, on this device. So I'm definitely impressive there. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I haven't covered. I did mention the issues that I had, like I said, the Bluetooth was a little bit, um, interesting to get going. I did have to pair it with the device out of the box. So it didn't, it did the Bluetooth didn't work right off the bat. Um, I had to turn it on, pair it. After I did that, it worked fine. Um, the kickstand, like I said, when you hit the that back there, it's just kind of, again, I don't know if this is just my device or if it's all of them, but there's that definitely that little wobble there. Um, and the pen is simply not my preference. But that said, overall, this is a really, really nice device. Um, I probably, you know, I've, I've been doing IT for over 10 years now, and I've put my hands on hundreds of different devices. And this is easily one of the best um, computers that I have played around with. Um, my experience out of the box was great. Everything just worked with the exception of the keyboard. Um, but hopefully that 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 seems like the sort of thing that it'll um, it, it, they should be able to resolve that. Um, I'm curious to see what other people's experience are with that kickstand if they have the same thing. Um, but again, overall, it's just been an absolute pleasure to use this device. It is definitely a device that I'm going to be recommending to friends and family. Um, so it's it is I would say well worth the money. Starting price for this for the M3 model guys is seven ninety nine. Um, I the the M3 processor is um, kind of your entry level. Um, there's two i5 specs um, and then an i7 spec, which is what this computer is. Um, the you know again my experience I've used i5 devices and i7 devices, um, both of which are. Um, pretty effective for your daily use. Um, when it comes to streaming or more intensive applications, definitely recommend getting the i7 version of this. Uh, you know, again, my my personal use of this, um, you know, I've, I've run it pretty hard uh, as far as the, uh, you know, pushing the processor and making it go into turbo. Uh, the initial night that I had this, I was installing a lot of applications. So for a period of, I would say about two hours, I was over 100% CPU usage, which is for those who don't know, it's when you're pushing the CPU into its turbo mode, um, and it definitely held up. I didn't experience any throttling with the processor, and what's really cool, this has what's called passive cooling, um, so there, or fanless cooling is another way to put it, um, so there are actually no fans in here running. It is just simply using um, heat dispersion uh, in order to cool the device, um, so even after that two hours of running, um, the back of the device was still like, it was warm, but it was not like burning your lap hot um, the way I've had uh, many laptops over the years be. Um, 
now the surface when put under a similar load uh, actually gets very noisy um it's it's a very white noise sound but the fans you can hear them running even when you're not the person sitting right in front of the computer so having this this device and pushing this device in uh, hard to the point where it was in turbo mode for the extended period of time and it being dead silent was a really nice experience um and something i'm looking forward to seeing in more devices um it's really impressive to see that it is able to take that kind of load uh, consistently uh, without a fan and not throttle the processor. So good job on that. That is, uh, that is definitely a, uh, a nice feature of this device. So one last thing that I want to mention here is throughout this uh, review, I did mention the Surface several times. I'm comparing this to the Surface 3 and the Surface 4. Um, uh, several of the features that the V contains are also found upon the Surface Pro. Pro. Uh, so just bear that in mind uh, when you are looking at this review. I apologize for not being clearer on that. I hope you guys liked the content. If you did, please hit the subscribe button below um, and definitely follow me on my Twitch for live content. Um, I do plan on doing a part two to this review. There are a couple things I didn't actually go over. Um, so please, please leave comments below. Um, let me know what you would like me to test, what you would like me to try, what you'd like me to cover in future videos. And as always, my friends, stay awesome.